Hi, I'm Dan Sigety, an Applications Engineer with Cirrus Logic Apex Precision Power Division. Today I'm going to show you four ways to stabilize an amplifier. Stabilizing power amplifiers is critical because oscillations can destroy parts, costing both time and money. I'm using an EK09 demonstration board, a PA96 operational amplifier, and that is mounted to an HS01 heatsink. I had this set up for an inverting gain of 10, and I'm using plus or minus 20 volt power supplies. It is good practice to use low voltage power supplies during initial testing, so if you do oscillate, your currents don't get out of hand. However, you must be careful to maintain the minimum power supplies recommended by the datasheet. Now, looking at the datasheet, you can see from the open loop frequency response that this amplifier will have a loop gain out to about 10 MHz. Looking at the open loop phase response, you can see this amplifier has far more than a 180 degrees phase shift at 10 MHz. This means the amplifier is going to be unstable. We can confirm by looking at the output on power up. And it is. The first thing we're going to do is add phase compensation by adding a capacitor. Most data sheets have recommendations on how to select capacitor size, and more information is available in the app notes. Phase compensation is essentially a way of sacrificing open loop gain in favor of phase response. And as you can see now, we no longer oscillate on power up. However, this does not guarantee stability. To test for stability, we will use a square wave test as described in app note 47. We will look at a 1 kHz, 2 volt peak to peak square wave. For more thorough testing, you can refer to the app note. Looking at the output, you can see we are indeed now stable. Phase compensation is a good first step towards stability at the expense of dynamic performance. Now that our amplifier is stable unloaded, let's load it with a capacitor. A capacitor is a good approximation for piezoelectric loads and for IC test equipment. IC test equipment tends to be loaded with power supply bypass capacitors, which look like a capacitive load to the amplifier. As you can see, we are unstable on power up again. There are three ways to solve this problem. The first is to add a capacitor to the feedback loop. This essentially rolls off the closed loop gain at higher frequencies. It leads to stability, but it compromises your dynamic performance. As you can see, our rise time seems to be greatly affected. Here I have added some capacitor feedback, but not enough. This phenomenon is called ringing and is a sign of marginal stability. If you get here, you're on the right track, but aren't there yet. Now, with enough capacitor feedback, you can see we are stable. The second fix is to add an isolation resistor between the load and the amplifier. As the name implies, this will isolate the load from the amplifier. Since the voltage and the current are out of phase, the voltage drop across the load is relatively unaffected. However, the power dissipated in the resistor and supplied by the amplifier is not trivial. The third fix is to add noise gain. I've added a resistor and capacitor in series across the differential inputs. Noise gain is a technique by which you increase the high frequency gain to decrease your bandwidth. Noise gain is a good step towards stability that won't affect dynamic performance. However, you will get significant overshoot and decreased bandwidth. In many applications, you may find that a combination of approaches work best. The app notes provide a great reference to work off of. If you try these techniques and you're still having issues, you may contact us at 800-546-2739 or email us at apex.support at cirrus.com.